So, uh, as you know, the purpose of e-learning is to provide students with an opportunity to uh, virtually learn course material when RB was otherwise or would have otherwise been closed. Um, so I want to go over a brief report of how we implemented e-learning um, on January 30th and 31st. Um, and that report begins on page uh, 20. And I'd like to begin by um, highlighting the attendance for the week. So as you can see, the daily attendance for the week was highest on our two e-learning days. Um, Wednesday was 96% roughly, and Thursday was 92%. Um, and as the students on um, Student Association told you, as well as um, the other student feedback that we collected, the reason I think uh, we had a drop in attendance was because uh, we were surprised students took attendance on a Google form. And we were surprised uh, at uh, some of the confusion that students had. Um, teachers would vary the format slightly. Some would put last name, first name. Some would put first name, first name last name. Um, some wouldn't have like a message after students submitted the form to show that their form was actually submitted. So we had some students submitting that form like eight times to make sure they got attendance. So um, we realized there were lots of like tiny little things regarding that. And part of it was because some teachers um, had one Google form for the same, the same Google form for both days. So that's created the confusion, which is why I think we saw a drop in the attendance. Yeah, and there's a, there's a setting on there, too, where you only submit once. once. So if the teacher forgot to untick that box and they made it for both days, then there's, they couldn't submit for their attendance the second Correct. day. Can I just ask, how did you gather the feedback? Did you ask a certain group of students? Was there a survey? Like, um, So we asked the student association group as well as the student advisory board. So um, I meet with them along with uh, Dave and Kylie um, once a month. Um, and that is a representative group of um, students that represent our student demographics. Um, and so it's about 24 students. And so they shared their feedback. And then some teachers uh, distributed surveys to the students and shared their results with me as well. Um, for parents, we discussed it at the PTO meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we had um, lunch and learns with the staff. We also, on Institute Day, uh, devoted time to um, getting their feedback, but then also having teachers share um, lessons within their department. Um, and they, we also picked out lessons that we thought were uh, really great that we'd like to see moving forward to highlight those within each department as well. Um, and then as an administrative team, we debriefed. Um, so that was all the feedback that we collected. Um, the expectations are, are there for you. I don't think I need to go through and read them all. There was a question about um, how we monitored them. So um, in terms of monitoring um, teachers' availability on email, I was able to work with the director of technology to run a report on when teachers logged into uh, their Gmail accounts and when they logged off. Um, in regards to Schoology, we had every administrator um, look at the Schoology page of the staff members that they evaluate to not only make sure they um, met the procedural requirements, but also that the assignments were relevant um, at, at, to the curriculum. Um, I provided some sample lessons for you on the next page. Um, the sample lessons, I just tried to pick some lessons that really represented um, the different types of activities that teachers were doing. Um, this was a mix, some were from the first day, some were from the second day, but they all just are one lesson. Um, there were some questions on, on this. Um, the education, or challenge ed, which is one of our PE classes, students had an option to do a series of push-ups. I forget what it's called, but students had to do one push-up, and then students could take a break, and then they had to do two push-ups, and then they would do three push-ups, and they worked their way up, um, and girls and boys had different uh, requirements. Uh, the other question that was submitted was um, on Mathia, and uh, students, that's uh, a software program that we use that corresponds with our textbook in Algebra 1. And this is something that students do on a weekly basis, and students have to get about 75% correct to move on to the next module. Um, and then lastly, I already touched a little bit on the stakeholder feedback. You can see some of the feedback that's there. Um, again, for the most part, we got very positive feedback, um, but certainly with a brand new initiative, there are things that need to be improved. Um, and so we have a list of what those modifications are that we'd like to make. 
Um, and on Monday, myself, the assistant principal of curriculum, and Bridget Wilmot, our instructional technology coordinator, will be meeting to go over those and come up with what we want to change or modify for next year and then present that to the staff for getting um, for moving forward. Um, before I open it up to questions, I'd also just like to thank Bridget for all of her hard work in this. We wouldn't have been able to pull it off without all of her professional development that she provided to the staff, as well as the union and the, and the teachers. Um, you know, we were, we had to speed up our timeline probably two, maybe two and a half weeks. Um, and so we, were, we weren't quite ready to roll it out to the staff and then the cold weather hit um, and everyone worked really hard um, in a matter of 48 hours to make sure that this was not only up and running, but that it was a meaningful experience to our students. Any Thanks. questions? Good job, Kirsten. Yeah, can I just say, my only thought on it, and I, I'm just thinking, you know, being in education myself, we knew it was going to be really cold out, but I'm just thinking if there's an if there's a snow day where maybe they're predicting two inches and we get 20, how how would teachers like in an instant get assignments? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if there isn't as much lead time, do you think we would have an e-learning day in a situation like that? And how would we would we be able to prepare? We've talked about that, and uh, I think that was part of our feedback sessions of some things that we need to prepare. It's kind of the mm -hmm. same instance though of. Uh, teachers having a, a sub plan prepared, right? You don't know mm -hmm. if something's going to happen on the way to school. Mm -hmm. And so we require every teacher to have an emergency sub plan as well. So um, we talked about teachers uh, creating an e learning folder and trying to keep as much of their stuff either in Schoology or in Google Classroom mm -hmm. uh, so that it would be quickly available to students. Now that we're a fully one to one right. school, right. Um, I mean, we should still be able to get to 90% or so of our students mm -hmm. um, and have an e-learning assignment updated. I mean, like my student, my ch uh, my, my st uh, kid's school closed and does an e-learning day on short notice. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they just, they change that attendance window so they give staff some time right. to get assignments up and upload it to Schoology. Uh, and then students have to log in. So you just move the uh, the window, uh, the the windows and the hours of operation mm -hmm. uh, from when kids have to log in. But you should still be able to do this. Let's hope we don't need any more e-learning days right. the rest of the year. We also have a plan to go over it at grade level assemblies at the beginning of each semester, and then have teachers follow up in the classroom because um, we realize that you have to continually remind students of where to go and what to do in the event you have to use it last minute. Mm -hmm. What? Do as, as what I stated also to the staff, and I think it would be important to say on TV, uh, our first priority is to still have school. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to have school when even when the weather is inclement as much as possible. Our second priority, if not to have school that day, would then go to a late start, which we implemented on Monday when there was the snow. Uh, because nothing can replace students interacting with their classmates and their teachers. So my, my thought process as we work through this is, you know, have school, second option, late start, and then third option, obviously, is close and, and possibly an e-learning day. But I don't want people to think that we're going to throw in these e-learning days whenever the wind's, you know, blowing in the wrong direction or it drops below a certain temperature. The goal is still to have school. You know, following up on Kevin's point about how you would prepare in the future, like have it, what did you do or what do, I guess you had to do it. I mean, some teachers were probably sick on Wednesday, that Wednesday and Thursday. So what do you do to get an assignment if the teacher was unavailable? Um, I actually don't think that we had to deal with that okay. this past time. We did have a plan for that because oh. you still have to create sub plans when you're out. Um, and so the teacher, if the teacher was sick, the uh, teacher would still be responsible for creating sub plans and putting them on Schoology, so oh, an activity okay. for students to do. And then each teacher shared their attendance sheet with their instructional coach. So then their instructional coach would be responsible for giving that attendance information to our attendance secretary. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So with that, I, I noticed that even we were worried about the attendance going down on, when, on Thursday or Wednesday, but it was still the highest attendance of the, of the week. Mm -hmm. So, but to reiterate Kevin's point, I, I don't think, you know, you could substitute uh, being in school. Second point, was, was there any feedback on the 10-month employees? 
from um, the 10-month employees that didn't get to work? The 10-month the employees that uh, either chose to take a personal day or they all chose to um, come in for one of the institute days and uh, our director of special education and system principal of, of um, student affairs puts to get either some activities together or some training together. So there were enough options where they could pick something where they weren't already planning on working in an event like prom or graduation. That's why we added the institute days after hearing some of their feedback. I just want to add the comment. I'm glad we have the option to close. We always have this discussion. This school like never closes. Three feet of snow, six feet of water, we'll 20 down. below. <laughs> and sometimes it's just not safe to come here. And I'm glad, you know, we can say we can close and they can stay at home and everybody stays safe. So again, thank you. You know, you shouldn't have to go through amazing feats to get here. Okay, is there any more comments? All right, thank you.